Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in the educational tradition of this channel I am starting a series of learning things through video games but this time we're doing it with a twist. In this new series I decided to teach you how to actually learn to make your own video games rather than showing you what you can learn by playing them. This first tutorial series will take you through an excellent free software called Stencil and you will learn all you need to know on how to start making your own fun amazing two-dimensional games that will hopefully one day lead you to become a full-time game developer. Welcome to What The Math. And welcome to part two of teaching coding with Stencil. In this particular part, we're going to focus on, I guess, two different things. First one is going to be basically defining what kind of a game we're going to make. So we're going to plan everything. And then part two is going to be about designing the actual level and figuring out what kind of assets we're going to use and how we're going to get them. So first, very, very, very important. And here I'm going to use another website, which I'm going to show you in a second. We're going to define our game. So this is a website called mindmap.com, not map, mop, M-U-P. Uh, the link for this is in the description. And here we're essentially going to play around with uh, the ideas, uh, what we're going to make and how we're going to make it. This is actually very, very important. Every single game developer always starts with this because you need to know what you're doing, right? You can't just kind of start a game without really knowing where you had it. This will allow us to kind of create a game. Now, first of all, let's kind of come up with some sort of a title. Now we're going to make a space game, as I mentioned in the first video. I'm going to call this Anton in space. All right, so that's pretty uh, a pretty good title. I'm pretty sure this is not going to be a very popular game, but uh, I'm going to do my best. Uh, we're going to add a child here and let's uh, name that. Uh, so this is going to be a space shooter and this is going to be the, the genre for our game. I'm going to put it on top so we can see it really, really well. It's also going to be a two dimensional game. So it's a 2D game because we're using stencil and it only deals with two dimensions. The perspective here is going to be top down, so we're going to be looking at the spaceship and everything else from the top, and it's not going to be a side scroller, it's not going to be anything else, it's going to be a top down. For most two dimensional games, you can either go with you know, the top perspective or you can go with two dimensional uh, platformer, uh, but that is kind of not what we're headed towards, so we're going to go for this. And now let's talk about the actual game. So our character is going to be a spacecraft. We're going to play as a spacecraft and we're going to make it using Piskel, which I showed you in a previous video. Our enemies are going to be aliens. So we're going to have to either come up with aliens or make them or possibly just uh, get a few aliens we can find online and use them as well. Our mission here is going to be to collect money from asteroids and I think this is just something simple I'm going to define here just because I really have no other better idea but basically we're going to come up to an asteroid we're going to destroy it and then collect money from it and the main purpose uh, for the money is going to be to deliver it to space station and to possibly then use that money to essentially buy stuff. I'm not sure if we're going to actually make any kind of menus for buying and selling but we can try uh, just because we want to make basically a kind of a template for a possible space game that you can actually uh, use later on. So anyway, so that's kind of the basics here. So there's our sort of main idea. And I think this kind of defines our game pretty well. And now that I have my mind map, I'm going to go ahead and start making my, my character. So my main character is a spacecraft. I am going to be uh, making this using Piskel. As I mentioned before, I'm a horrible artist. This is what I've made so far. It has, it has a nail on it because it's an Anton spacecraft. Don't You can start laughing. I'm going to wait for you to finish laughing. Uh, so anyway, so you can use Piskel to make amazing pixel art. I'm a horrible artist, so mine is not going to be amazing, which is why I'm going to use a lot of free resources, which I'm going to show you later on. And now that I actually have my file, I'm going to export this. And this is, I'm going to basically export as a PNG file. So uh, the interesting thing here is that you can actually change the scale. So you can actually make the super big or super small, but I think three X is fine. We can always just change that later on. And once you actually download it, you can actually check. Uh, so let me just download this. You can actually check um, what it looks like by opening this up. And so there you go. I think it's a pretty good size. Uh, it doesn't look too big, doesn't look too small. Actually, let's actually make it maybe a little bit smaller. Let's make it two X. Let's see what this looks like. All right, yeah, that's a little bit better. I kind of like this a little bit better. So there you go. So there's our spacecraft. But here's the thing, though. Because we actually want to have four dimensions, right? We, we, um, or I, I guess what I'm talking about is movement here. And I should possibly go back to my mind map and define my movement as well. So we're going to have four axes movement. I'm going to just keep this here. And so that means that I can go left, right, up, and down. 
uh, well, technically in space there is no up and down so it's going to be forward backwards left and right uh, but it does look like left up right and down and so this means we need to do this four times we're going to save four different images so that we don't have to do it later it's much easier to do it in Pisco right away so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to go back here and click this button and it automatically uh, basically rotates it for you now I'm going to do this again save again download PNG and then let's do this three more times and now we actually have all of our directions perfect so now we have four files I'll just have to rename them later on uh, but actually might as well do it now so right here under Anton game I'm going to actually rename these and give them a proper title so this is going to be called up and remember in in most uh, programming languages everything is case sensitive so you have to remember this is capital U and uh, small p this is going to be called right so this is going to be right all right and this is going to be left so perfect so uh, we have four directions uh, and, and this will be our main character so now that we have a character design set uh, we just need to find out uh, the background for our game and then we also need to find a tile set so let's actually go into finally into stencil and create a new game so we're going to press this button right here and we're going to create a completely blank game with nothing in it because it's a lot more fun that way we're going to learn a lot more if we just do it from scratch it's going to be called Anton Space Shooter and um, width and size, this is the size of your actual uh, game. I'm going to just choose this for now because um, we're not really aiming to make a mobile game. We just want to experiment with things. So there we go. So it's going to take a little bit, uh, a few seconds to save everything. And you have your blank game. Now, the first thing we're going to do is obviously uh, create a background and also add a tile set because we need to have some sort of a level design. In a previous video, uh, when I was using Stencil Forge, I think I found a really, really nice looking space background. And we might just as well use that. Let's see if there's actually anything else here. Actually, this right here looks pretty nice. It's called Universe 1. So this is something you can just download right away. And we're going to download this. It's going to do this for us automatically. It's going to be one of our resources now that we can use in our game. But if you're actually planning to make a game that you're going to be selling later on, you really need to learn how to either, you know, hire someone to do this for you or do this yourself. I'm not planning to make any money from this game. I'm actually, as a matter of fact, I'm hoping that nobody ever sees it because it's going to be absolutely horrible. But uh, nevertheless, if you're planning to, you know, make money, you need to be able to not use copyrighted uh, stuff or uh, use resources that you'll have to possibly later on pay for. Uh, it's suddenly stuck. I'm guessing uh, There you go. It just took a little bit a few seconds. So th this is going to be our background It looks kind of okay I guess it's not perfect, but you know what it works for me and the thing is we can always change it anyway So uh, now that we have our background and our Anton space shooter It's automatically going to be added here because we just downloaded from stencil forge um, If it wasn't added automatically you just have to click on this button and here you can actually name it. I'm going to name it universe. And uh, once you create it, it gives you a chance to essentially either um, add a frame if you actually want to have several frames. And then when you're adding a frame, you can choose an image and insert that image in there. Uh, but since it did it for us automatically, we don't actually have to go through this. We're going to close this and actually erase this empty background which we don't really need now remember this is not a level yet this is just essentially a picture that stays in the background when you play in the game uh, we'll need to add this to our actual level later on but we don't have to worry about this yet the next thing we'll need for our game are the tile sets now let me just show you what I'm actually doing and what this is all for I'm going to actually show you one of the examples you can find on Stencil website, especially uh, these examples here from Education. This is actually what I'm going to be using right now. If you actually go into Education and you click on Get the Kit, um, there's a bunch of uh, student activities right here, which you can kind of download, uh, or you can also download the kit itself. Um, I'm just going to cancel this for now. Now these are essentially files that you can get uh, that already have projects pre-made for you that kind of teach you a little bit in every single act. And I just wanted to kind of show you what we're going for here. So here is an example of uh, a game that doesn't actually have a background, but it does have tile set. Tile sets are these things. They are these little blocks right here, which act like objects that don't actually move anywhere. Now you can put as many of them as you want, um, but uh, so there's two types of tile sets. Tile sets that you can collide with. So for example, if I come over here, I'm going to collide with this unless I can jump over it, but I haven't taught my character how to jump yet. 
And Tyle says that uh, you can easily pass through, and I believe this is actually uh, these blue squares, which you don't really see, but they're in the background. These uh, blue tile sets are in, um, you pass through, and the green tile sets you don't pass through. This uh, level doesn't actually have any background, but if I were to add a background to it, and for the lack of a better picture right now, I'm just going to use my face because I don't know why. Don't ask me why. I just couldn't find a better picture. Uh, here we go. So this will now be a background. And uh, as you can see, because I just added a new background, it's sort of covering my tile sets. I just have to actually change the order of layers to make this disappear, to make this normal. But uh, anyway, so now I, there's a big face of me watching my hero as I play the game. So there you go, a little bit unnerving for me and possibly for you, but anyway, so that's an idea of a background, this is how it works. Um, and tile sets are uh, slightly different because they're actual objects, like I can actually add tile sets to this level um, and these will be, you know, objects that do not actually, uh, or you cannot actually pass through and you can also choose objects that you can pass through. I think this one here is possibly something that I can walk through. But so that's tile sets, but we need to actually find them for our level. Actually, let's go back to the original game. I'm going to quit this. I'm going to close this game and don't save it. And we're going to go back to Anton Space Shooter. And what we're going to do here is, well, essentially we're going to find a tile set. One thing you can, you can do is obviously go to Stencil Forge and look for a tile set you like. Uh, so choose, like, for example, like I said before, if you're making a Minecraft-like ga like game, there's already one that kind of includes these really good-looking Minecraft uh, tiles for you. So you can have a 2D game that is Minecraft-like. But then, unfortunately, when I looked up space, I couldn't really find anything. There isn't really that n nothing that I kind of liked. I can maybe look up planets, and there's nothing for planets. Now, well, first of all, let's think about it. Let's go back to our mind map for a second and think what kind of a actual... Um, tile set we need to include. I'm thinking that the only tile set we need, the only object I'll be colliding with is essentially going to be planets. We don't, we don't really need anything else. Asteroids are going to be objects, or not objects, sorry, actors. They're going to be actor types. Uh, so that's slightly different because they'll have behaviors. They'll be able to actually move around. But the only unmovable object that I'm going to collide with is a planet. And that's actually, uh, that's the only thing I, I need to find. I need to find a bunch of planets. Uh, so one way you can do this is obviously, once again, go to Piscal and draw a planet. I could totally do that, but I'm going to show you a lazy way out. Uh, you can also go on Google and type uh, planet tile set and then maybe include pixel in here because it will give you pixel art and just look for something that you like. Um, you, obviously, if you're making like a, a 2D shooter or something, you may want to look up something else. But basically, the, uh, the key word here is tile set. Uh, lo lots of times you'll find someone's someone else's work that is actually free. Uh, you can check if it's free by obviously going to the website and possibly emailing the person and asking if you can use these. But I kind of like this. Look, look at that. So there's a bunch of planets here. Uh, let me just check where this is. And it says that it's a, from a website called Open Game Art. I've actually used this before. There's lots of lots of different pixel art here, already pre-made pixel art that you can kind of download. So this is an excellent resource to add to your list. Uh, and here, if I just look up planet, I can find tons of different uh, resources for me to use. So there's these pixel planets, which actually look really beautiful. There's also these uh, planets right here that look even more beautiful. And right before I download these, I need to check uh, what kind of sort of copyright it has. And it says graphics are in public domain. Perfect. So I don't have to really worry about this too much. All I need to do is essentially just use these in my game. And once you find a really good picture, and I think I kind of like this one because it has planets and spacecraft, which I may actually use later on. And uh, once you find something that you want to use, and this is by someone by the name of Sentu, I'm giving him credit for, for doing this, but obviously this is um, in public domain, so you can always reuse this as well. So anyway, so you find the picture, you go to your uh, tile set, create a new tile set by clicking this button, and then once you open it up, Open it up and it should technically uh, be ready to go. Now, the thing is with some tile sets, you, you might actually see this. You might see these kind of squares right there, lines uh, that you can kind of see right now because I changed the borders. And what you need to do is make sure that all of these lines are aligned with the planet. So if they're not aligned, this is what's going to happen. Your tile sets are going to be out of kind of order. They're going to be a little bit misaligned. You don't want that. So right now it's already aligned. I'm going to edit again and 
And now when I add it, uh, it's going to be all already aligned perfectly well. You can kind of see that they're all perfectly in the square, so I can easily add these uh, to my game. Now, the important part to do with your tile set now is to define which objects have collisions, which you see right here on the right, and which don't. And also what kind of a shape does collision have? Like for example, this planet, it should not have a square collision. It's not a, it's not a square object. So we're going to go and see if there's any spheres here. And unfortunately there isn't. And if there isn't a shape that you would like, uh, and if actually you want this to be an actual sphere or a, a uh, not sphere, sorry, a circle and as circular as possible, you can actually add a new shape and you can create a polygon and define the points of collision. You can actually do this manually from scratch just to make sure that um, this looks like you want it to look. It, it actually, you know, it, it sort of suits your purpose. Now, this is a little bit too time consuming, so I'm not going to do that yet. I'm just going to go with a square. All of these are going to be square collisions for just for now, just to make it simple. And uh, everything else is going to have collision as well. So essentially, we can have these static objects now in the background. Like, for example, some sort of a spaceship just kind of like stands there and we can possibly get a dock with it. Or I guess these... Uh, Space stations might be also nice to add. But anyway, so now we have our tile sets and essentially our level is ready to be made. We're just going to close this now. It's going to save the game or I guess save our level. And uh, we're now ready to create our first scene. Now we're going to do this in the next video because this video is getting a little bit too long. And so, uh, so yeah, the summary and everything you should have learned from this video is essentially how to set up your background, how to set up your tile sets and get ready to create a new level and Use the internet, use the tools like, for example, um, opengameart.org is a very good uh, resource for uh, pixelated art. Obviously, Pisco for making your actual um, actors and for actually making your uh, actors and characters. And by the way, you can also animate this. I could have actually animated this, animated this by adding a little bit of a fire effect to the engine, which you can kind of see in the preview here. Uh, but I didn't do that mostly because we don't really need to get so complicated just yet. And I guess that one of the more important tools uh, for a, you know, a successful uh, coder, for a successful game designer, is using things like mind maps. And this is a website called mindmop.com, which is actually one of the better sort of uh, free websites to use for this type, type of planning. And now that we have everything planned out and we know what we're doing, we're going to start our level design in the next video. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video and like it if you've actually learned something from it. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later. Bye-bye.